Hey, so I would say with this, uh, don't be afraid to get a little softer on some of these edges. Uh, let me duplicate this. There's going to be a lot of information happening in your shadows, and I think overall it might be, you could offset some of the cooler tones by having some warmer ones in there as well. So I would probably take, like this is the water, let's just scrub this out to start. I would have, if this is anywhere, well, I guess I would do, yeah, kind of like you did first with the, the cooler tone, kind of laying the base. But where there's light or where it's shallow is where you're going to see underneath there. At least I would guess that. So I get a little more saturated and a little bit more warmer in, in color where it's going to be a bit more shallow. So like what you have there with the dog, don't be afraid to get that underneath. The, the legs feel a little bit on the, the larger side. This is like a side note. But yeah, I'd get that in there. Keep it darker in the corners and where there'll be light happening, that's where I would um, show a little bit more of that surface treatment uh, on the rock. So if this, for instance, like this feels like a fairly washed out yellow, like it's way up here in the light, I'd probably have it way down here. All right, select that. I'd, I'd bring in a lot, oh, I selected it again for me. What I say, something like that. I have a lot more oranges kind of going on. In there, let me see. Sorry, this is like the first time I painted today. So I'm a little bit rusty. Yeah, see that kills the pasty look of it. So, we're getting some of that in there. I like these greens. Again, I'd warm up a lot of these tones where there might be sun. So if there's like water coming in or light coming in down there, I definitely have some hotter spots in the sand, kind of around like that. Let's just say if there's some dappled light, like right there. And then if where there's stones, I get warmer, more green, you know where those are so you see you start to see something kind of like this here are the top of the stones in there and then below the stones is where I get perhaps a bit cooler a little bit more into shadow something like that and in between them but have that nice blue light as the fill uh, the purple here as we sh I should call it as the fill light in between there so something kind of like that and then chisel out you know, some of those shapes to show the depth in that water. There's a lot of different cool range, you know, you can get out of the stones and the and the rocks in here. And this color, if there's if you have like some light, you know, dappling through, <laughs> the dapplage kind of coming through, uh, you'd see some of that bounce light on the back side of of the dog. So the, the biggest issue I think overall this thing has is that the shadows, because of that sort of thing, throughout the image get a little bit uh, flatter than they need to be. You can have a much better, a much better range, I should say. So you're kind of getting a little bit of that, of course bringing a little bit more color into the dog and then getting dark. You know, and shadow underneath that under the water and then you could bring up you know, more color kind of sprinkled throughout okay, the background like a little bit deeper yellows you darken that up there a little bit so you should all feel just a little bit more lush than it is so yeah, as I mentioned before, sorry, there goes the boiler. All right, I'm back. So 
This is what I've been doing. See, so giving the dog a lot more form, bringing in some skylight here, bringing in the core shadow here. Here's some nice bounce light coming in from the water down in that area. And these are all the different things that you need to do to give it, uh, you know, a more dimensional form. Then I've started to jump over here on the rocks, filling this in with a lot more light, color, and information. This is basically whether you're uh, this cold highlight right here, or this cold shadow, or this uh, darker midtone. It's all very flat and, and one-dimensional color-wise. So I'm adding different shades of blue and purple into the shadow areas, and then warming up some of these shadow areas that are kind of closer and to the ground more pointed toward the water to bring some of these colors up into here to get them kind of talking and communicating a little bit better. Meanwhile, I'm um, bringing up here on the, the edge of the, uh, the rocks, see I'm kind of cooling that off to show that it is in shadow, but these areas, right where it's getting some of that direct light, I'm not afraid to push these warmer tones. So it really looks like, you know, if Wherever you want light, make it very obvious that's where some direct sunlight is. Uh, same with these rocks under here. You can come in and bring in you know, a little bit of these colors and stuff from the water bouncing up, around, you know, and through. But that's kind of some of the changes I would do anyway to this. But it's a, it's a great, you know, it's a great piece. It's a lovely piece. You need a lot more, you know, I think, colors in here. This goes from just dark blue to lighter blue. I get some brown, some some green, some ochres, some things like that. Watch your stamping on the um, these leaf brushes. Try to do leaves, actually, without a leaf brush. I know that might sound, uh, that might sound like completely asinine to some people, but really just get in there with like a a brush, like a regular kind of brush, and try to paint, you know, and sculpt some of these leaf shapes, because you'll be thinking in terms of bigger masses, you know, and forms in regards to them, like, and you won't be so worried about these individual kind of like, you know, in here, like these noisier textures, and it, it should be a little bit more, you know, subtle. It's so like, what are the bigger shapes? So this is, it gets a little bit too samey, switch brushes, or make the size or the angle a little bit different. And then, you need, you, then you can get in there and really get a little bit uh, more particular with some of those leaf shapes. But that, that's generally the problem you know, a lot of people have with doing um, foliage, is they rely too much on the brush and they should be thinking more about the color, more about uh, the gesture and the forms of the greater uh, shape. So like if this is all in shadow, we could start kind of intensely kind of warming them up a little bit where bits of that dappled light right, is kind of coming in and what is the shape that these are making and so on so forth they can get a little bit smaller then if you have like areas in here that are quite a little bit more subdued we can get a little bit more light you know in some of these areas but try and I, I definitely advise to try at least a good pass without the um without the major types of uh, foliage brushes first. I know it's an easy kind of crutch to kind of rely upon, but it sometimes it just doesn't do you any favors, or sometimes it makes a nice base, but it, you know, again, it can be just too obvious, and that just requires some additional. And uh, finally, sometimes when doing the, like a reflection or a shadow, I can just do overlay or multiply, and then use, you know, relatively a soft brush. You can always, you can always change it a little bit later. See, like on the rock, like a light effect like that. In there, in there. You know, this one's already looking pretty good. And then, obviously, all down there. And then, from the dog. You get a little darker in there, sure. And then you could bring back the, uh, not like as bright as that, obviously, but you could get a little shallower, a little bit lighter with some of those stone shapes, even though I'm doing it in a really generic you know, sort of way there. But yeah, that's some of the changes I do anyway. Uh, thanks for uh, contacting me and the best of luck.